Good morning, ladies and gents. This is Ian McFarland down here with Ryan Henry. What's going on, guys? We're going to um, do a little entry-level series here um, to start in the fishing in the Cape Cod Canal. Uh, big spot, a lot of current, big fish. can kind of be daunting, so we're going to break it down. It's more simple than everybody kind of uh, anticipates it will be. Yeah, so, so we're going to make a video series on just gear, um, etiquette, safety, what to do, when to target these big migrating fish. And yeah, we're going to get started. This is just an intro video, so we're... Um, we're just going to start talking about it, but um, before um, we get started, make sure you like and subscribe, and make sure um, you follow our page. Yep. Comment. We do uh, we do read these guys, so we're getting um, info for future videos to so the comments for these ones, so it's valuable for both of us. Make sure mm -hmm. you uh, are active out there, you know? Yeah, and if you have any questions, drop below. We will reply. Yep. So, just kind of a basic um, overview. This is all stuff we do own. Um, we all fish, we all fish the canal pretty regularly. Um, the canal has been a little tough the last few years, um, due to the declining striped bass population. That's another thing I would want to stress is make sure you catch and release these fish and handle them properly. Um, we want our kids and our grandkids to keep catching these fish. So it's just one thing I cannot stress enough. Um, we're going to talk about plug modifications, especially with like the magic swimmer and the sea bile stick shed. Um, a lot of taking out a lot of the back treble hooks, um, proper gear. Um, you don't want to fight these fish too long and you also want to be able to handle a 40 or 50 pounder for sure. Yeah, but they're definitely out there. You never know. We're always hunting for those big ones. So when it comes, you got to be ready for it. For sure. All right, as far as uh, tackle we like to use for landing these big fish, generally you're going up two sizes from what I would use on the beach. Mm -hmm. So we've got beautiful brand new Saragossa 10,000. I would highly recommend at least an 8,000 size reel because um, you're going to run 40 or 50 pound braid with these. Um, you want the proper line capacity. You want to be able to cast really far and not have um, your decrease in line kill your cast. Um, also, crank, you know, inches per crank on these is around the 40 inch range. So you can stay up out of the snags on the bottom. Um, beautiful reel, butter smooth, nice big power handle. So when these things smack, you know, you can get your hand on it and uh, crank these things in. Oh, I love this. I'm taking it off. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm actually going to have to buy one this year. I was using a 6K um, most of last year, and I was able to land some pretty um, some decent fish, um, but it was a struggle. Hmm. Um, but generally, with the canal, um, you need a plugging and jigging setup. Um, the Saragossa 8 or 10K is, a good for, is good for both of them. I, obviously, there's better reels out there for the job, like the Stellan Saltico. We'll get into that in another video. But uh, me personally, I have uh, two rods that I use. Um, I have a Jigster 10.6 um, rated for a 4 to 10 ounces. And yes, you are throwing jigs at around the 4 to 8 ounce range very consistently, especially when you're not fishing the breaking tides. Another part we'll get into in a later date. But um, also, I got the um, Salt X Tsunami Rod. This is a great rod. It's rated to 4 ounces. It's good for plugging. Um, when I'm fishing on top, I tend to throw lighter stuff just personally because um, the Jigster, I can... I can still pencil pop with that very effectively as well. And I'll be throwing a lot of the Magic Swimmers, Stick Shads, and bigger pencil poppers with the Jigster. But with lighter stuff, like this Guppy or the Helen's Glide Dart, um, I'll be throwing with um, the Salt X Rod. Yeah, very nice. Um, so something like that, is what, Ryan, is that around the $300 range? That's around $300. Bucks. Um, surf Rods are always going to be a little on the pricier side. Um, one of the, some other cheaper options are TFOs and Star Rods, but uh, we'll get into that. Yeah, 200, 200 what, these are $300 bucks and the $200 mm -hmm. for the rod, so $500. You're getting a really nice all-around setup that'll last you a couple of years. Yeah, here, we'll, talk, we'll talk about a cheaper setup for guys, because we know a lot of people don't live on the cape or near the cape but you will still want to fish the canal and we see a lot of uh out-of-staters hook into large fish with lighter gear and they lose a lot of big fish so we'll talk we'll get more into that um for line choice for braid and fluorocarbon we recommend anywhere from 40 to a 60 pound liter um 80 if there's blue fish around yeah we highly recommend cigar a blue label we talked about this in a previous video it's more abrasion resistant and um, I know Ian's a big fan of Power Pro and J Braid. Can you yeah. get into that? Yeah, so um, I like any of the decent eight strands. Uh, they're really nice. You're going to get a lot of line capacity. You're going to get a um, really nice smooth mm -hmm. cast. Doesn't tear up your fingers as much. Um, I like 40 pound just because I feel like the castability is really good. Um, and I can use, you know, my bigger um, canal rods and I'll use them on the boat too. Mm -hmm. So it kind of keeps it a little bit multi-use for me. Um, 
stretching your tackle to get the most out of it. Yeah. We're not super deep pockets. So as I can get my money's worth, it uh, makes it a little bit easier for me to take that. You, you also you also trust his uh, fighting <clears throat> ability a lot. He doesn't drop too many fish regarding. Yeah, we try to hook size. him and keep him, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, but we have a, a wide array of lures here on the table. Um, we got anywhere from three, four ounce pencil poppers. This guy's almost nine inches long. Um, this is a guppy. This is one of the first ones of this. This is um, a Gibbs. This is actually one of the guys who invented the pencil popper. This is specifically designed for the canal because it has a flat bottom. Um, we got these new Allen's glide baits in. This guy is almost three ounces and it's it's huge, big, deep profile. Nothing looks more like a pogey than that guy. And we have pencil, other pencil poppers like this Outcast. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, you do have to you you do have to have a significant amount of current to work this guy specifically because it's um it's got a lot of weight in the tail. If you don't have a lot of current, it's time to sink a little faster. So I like I like pencil popping in the slower end. Um, we also have some. There's only there's really only two or three jigs that you should be using in the canal, and here they are: Al Gags and uh, the Savage Gear. Yeah. Uh, Bill Hurley makes also another good one as well. Um, I don't know why we don't use that one as much, but it's still another effective jig. Yeah. So as long as it's uh, three ounces plus and has a really stout hook on it, mm -hmm. that's good enough for me. Um, I do tend to go with Al Gags. I like the uh, a little bit blunter nose. I feel like it doesn't find like the crevices and rocks as much. Yeah. And I don't snag. Um, but I also go by the theory that if uh, if you're not snagging, you're not catching. That's as far true. as the jigs go, yeah. you know. So um, me and uh, McPartland both have different takes on how we transport and store our tackle. So we're going to both get into how we do that as well. Um, he likes more of the Sim Slim Packs and other backpacks you use. Yeah, I just um, I like to keep it with me. Um, I think we've all heard stories of tackle getting ganked at the canal. Um, it's Happens not cheap. Time. It's super expensive. Nobody can just afford to lose a whole pack. So I like to be able to keep it on me. Um, I don't want to leave it on my bike at the top at the hill um just because everybody is a lot of traffic and not everybody is super honest so no um, i like not. to keep all mine unfortunately um but these uh with the canal style bags are really nice because they do generally fit um on the side like the side trays of your canal bikes um so you can you know ride your bike with this in the in the side saddle and then uh hop out and walk down with it to the rocks you know mm -hmm. And a lot of capacity on these guys. Yeah, you need you need a bigger bag because I mean like this plug's like nine inches long. Yeah. You need you need a big bag. I so. like um I love running like the standard trays, but sometimes when these plugs get this big, they just don't fit. So um the plugs kind of limit your storage um and what what style of pack you would use to hold this thing because it's so freaking huge. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah, that's basically our introduction. Um, one of the reason why we're doing this introduction is um, please comment below what you want to see from this video series. Um, me and Ian are big canal fishermen. Um, me personally, before I moved up to the Cape, I was infatuated with it. When I come up here for vacation, I fish the canal pretty much every day of the week, and a few times when. I got into a lot of a lot of um, blitzes. It's just it's just mind boggling how crazy the canal be. But it's its own entity. It's it's an animal. Yeah. Um, if uh, if the canal could talk, you know. Yeah. If the canal could talk. But there's also like there's a certain there's a certain etiquette. There's a certain um, way you have to do things at the canal. Um, one of my one of my favorite plugs it was almost like fifty bucks. So I um, literally collided with another guy's plug. Cause he was on over top of me so we're just going to talk about how to not piss off other fishermen um you don't want to bother a guy who's not catching fish and you don't want to bother the guy who's catching fish is all roy lay the quote um so we're going to talk about more of that uh safety um pretty much everything so please comment below what you guys want to see in this video series and we'll answer the best um answer the questions to the best of our ability and we'll try to do a video series covering everything well, before you're done, I got some questions from the people. You already got some questions? Come on. Yeah, I got some questions. Later on. All right, that's, that I'm was quick. Switch it up on you. This one's for the money bag. <laughs> He's got two plugs to throw yes. at the canal. Yes. That's it. What you got? Um, I'm probably going to throw um, the, the three ounce Algax uh, with some kind of paddle tail. I don't even get hung up on it. 
probably a dark green Mac. Um, I like the three because one, it doesn't beat up your finger. Casting the fives is brutal for three hours. Um, and I can fish like the whole water column. Yeah, I can't really bump the bottom with it. Um, but you can fish 80% of the water and that's good it's enough like for me. Enough. Um, then maybe, uh, maybe one of these sinking SLD ocean borns. I liked it a lot. Um, so you can fish it on top. Everybody likes to get a huge top water 30 pounder blow up. But uh, again, I can also fish like 80% of the water column with it. And it casts like an absolute rocket. You, you, so you get a crummy windy day. People, people, yeah. don't, people don't realize you guys can actually swim these poppers. They don't just pop. They actually swim. So, um, I'm a real big fan of the magic swimmer. Um, the only drawback is this casts like a shoe. It literally cannot cast far at all. But I mean, when the fish are in close, me personally, I don't think any fish hits a lure harder than the magic swimmer. I think it really feels like it's alive. I'll go with the magic swimmer and I love the savage gears. This got me a 43 incher last year. Um, and the hooks did not bend out unlike another jig, which happened to me. I'm not going to drop names though. <clears throat> 60 pounds of drag. <laughs> now, question is, kind of touching on the Seagot video we just did. Hmm. What? what label of fluorocarbon are we using at the canal? Um, blue. Either blue. I, um, I'm a super fan of the HD Carbon, um, Yozuri. I like the packaging uh, the most out of any manufacturer I've ever had, and it's got a reliable, super strong breaking strength. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like blue label, personally. Um, I will try the inshore though. Um, I'm very, I'm very impressed with what I've seen so far. And great for the price too. Oh yeah, I, I changed my each, I changed my leaders out very consistently at the canal because there's a lot of there's still people forget there's bluefish in there too, so you don't want to get chopped off and there's a lot of rocks and you, I'm jigging all the time. There's crab traps, lobsters. Snag a lobster is gonna ch chafe up your line. Just yeah. stuff like that. I always change my leader every single time I go. Yeah. Regardless. I'll change my leader even if I didn't catch any fish the last time. This will conclude the introduction part of this series. Um, please comment again below what you want to see in the next few videos. Um, feel free to ask me and uh, McPartland any questions on uh, Instagram, YouTube, or even here at the shop. So like, comment, subscribe. And have a great day, you guys. Pow.